For over six decades, oil has been an integral part of Nigeria's economy and has positioned her at the center of international trade. Today is a major turning point in the oil industry in Nigeria and Africa as a whole, with the formal unveiling of our first of its kind Pinnacle Oil and Gas and Pinnacle Lekki Petroleum Products Terminal, and we are honored to share it with you. Pinnacle Oil and Gas Limited is active across the entire downstream value chain, with emphasis on the petroleum trading, marketing, distribution and retail segments of the Nigerian oil and gas sector. And we are the leading bulk and wholesale marketer of petroleum products in Nigeria. At inception, our vision was to become the benchmark in the areas of quality delivery, best industry practices and technological advancement. We are unwavering in our resolve not to only keep this vision alive, but to build on it in line with innovations and the ever-changing needs of our clients. We noticed that the country was losing a lot of money on account of the demurrage were incurred as a result of the multiple handling. And of course, the fact that we were unable to move our dry cargoes from the ports as quickly as we could. So we felt that we needed to innovate. We needed to address those uh, social, business, and economic impacts. And we decided to look at ways of uh, optimizing, doing things optimally. The, the, the design of the project has been well thought after. It does not impede flow of traffic, unlike uh, you know, the direct lock in Apapa, which are all aware of, is causing so much uh, uh, discomfort to motorists. This one, they go through Epe, Shagamo, Benin, and to other parts of the country. This project, this project is a groundbreaking project for Nigeria. Uh, it's a groundbreaking project for Nigeria because, because of the the orientation, the physical positioning of where the facilities are located. How could you imagine building an open sea intake facility where the mother vessels could discharge from? That would also entail you running a subsea pipeline network and having a pipeline end manifold sitting on the seabed. So it required a lot of complex engineering. It is an audacious project. Um, there, there's about 300 million liters of um, storage facility for clean petroleum products. Um, there's an offshore conventional uh, boy um, system. That gives a twofold benefit to the country. Uh, the ship doesn't have to come into a, a port that's already congested. And in addition to that, more importantly, uh, you can bring a much larger ship that could actually ply Lagos port. Before embarking on this audacious voyage, we engaged all the relevant regulatory bodies to ensure the project meets national and international quality, efficiency, and safety standards. As a result, this project has lived up to its billing and remains a trailblazer. We had to obtain over 24 regulatory permits to even progress, including getting an approval from the Federal Executive Council, because this is a project that exceeds the approval capacity of the ministry. 
Now, with regard to Pinnacle, they wouldn't have reached, to be honest with you, where they are today if they had not complied with all this. Like I told you, I mean, uh, Pinnacle started with 80 million liters of capacity in Worry, another in uh, Lagos and Lekki with about uh, close to 1 billion by 2024. Come on, this is international standard. So what that meant was that we had to do lots of surveys and at different seasons of the year. So we needed to design with a work weather situation. So what we did was we conducted a bathymetric survey, we did a net ocean survey, we did a geophysical survey, and again, because you needed to classify the facility, you needed one of the classification societies to give their seal and stamp. You had to engage them at the early stages of the, of the project. We also did a geophysical survey. So doing a geophysical survey would require you going be below the seabed, understanding the texture of the soil beneath the seabed. And we're talking about a water depth of over 23 meters. That is where the SPM is sitting. And of course, the CBM sits at a water depth of 17 meters. Uh, we're we'll pleased to say that, and we did that with the, with the Nigerian content that was about 99%. Yeah, so we had uh, we had a lot of a lot of Nigerian participation in the project. Uh, we're pleased to say that our Nigerian workforce executed the project to the highest standards. We, they were able to meet every international criteria, every national criteria that uh, is associated with the with the project such as this. In terms of you know meeting gaps, certainly we made sure that you know all the risks that we could see. Are well mitigated. We had obtained necessary regulatory approvals before we came on board. The only thing that was regulated for us would be the extent of loan, and certainly we would comply with that. To this end, our journey as a 21st century compliant business continues with all new marine terminals. Assets that facilitate the berthing, launching, and discharging of full cargoes from mother vessels as soon as they arrive in Lagos, and discharge of these cargoes faster than any other terminal in the country. These mother vessels typically convey 60,000 or 90,000 metric tons of petroleum products, typically PMS or AGO. Our two mooring systems, one being the conventional buoy mooring, CBM, while the other is a single point mooring, SPM, are located in the open sea in deeper water than any jetty in the country. Additionally, our dedication to delivering on time and surpassing our clients' expectations makes our mooring systems more cost effective. This is because Pinnacle System reduces shipping costs, shipping lay times, charter costs for shuttle vessels, costs of equipment, and loss of products. By choosing to berth at our Pinnacle Lecky Terminal, our clients eliminate lightering, a term for ship-to-ship -ship cargo transfer to a smaller ship which is equipped for shallower berths. In most cases, lightering operations can take 30 days compared with our Pinnacle system, which takes a maximum of two days to execute. What we always done before now is if we have cargo in mother vessels, we'll go higher shuttle vessels. We're going to be incurring costs on the voyage higher of the shuttle vessels and at the same time incur costs on the demo rate of the mother vessel because we're keeping the mother vessel. So typically you would take as a a typical mother vessel would have 80 to 120 million liters. So in a case of 80 million you would need to do four voyages because you need to take 20 million at a time with a shuttle vessel. So a typical voyage would cost you, would take you eight days to do. Eight times four, that's already 36 days, right? Right, if my math says me well, or 32 days, right? 32 days. So, and then you 
would have the same cargo that would require you to do in 32 days. Now you have only just two days. If you put the mother vessel in our terminal, within 48 hours, the vessel is gone. 48 hours because we had to factor in the pre and the post discharge formality. Typically, it takes less than 24 hours in terms of the actual discharge time. Because we do about 4 million liters per hour. So if you work that out, in 20 hours, we've done 80 million. If you can discharge 90,000 tons in 24 hours, that's a mega feat. It's huge. And the facility itself, in terms of uh, truck out, can truck out about 20 million liters a day. That is, uh, that is massive. Because that's almost one third of national consumption of our petroleum products. In the past, this mother vessel would land offshore Nigeria and daughter vessel to pick the, the, the uh, petroleum products. But with this facility, it allows those large mother vessels to actually come into Nigeria and uh, that's what's the that we have done. Whoever is coming, then you go and go. Like all the information I've got, truck is if there's product, there's no truck doesn't miss time there. First of all, think about the fact that it can be used both for import and export. That's a major opportunity. Um, and it's not too far from refinery that is being done. So you can think about the potential for export. Um, certainly on the import side, we are already seeing that potential reality. Those large vessels come and start their jobs in very short period of time. Saves a lot of costs, like I said, for demolished costs, transshipment costs, which means it's cheaper to import petroleum products to that asset. For example, if a 30,000 toner comes in, cannot enter other, other duties, so they have to light maybe 20,000 or 15,000 to go. Now, with this one coming 90,000, it's charging in 48 hours. You can now divide that. 90,000 into 2020, 20, and you see the kind of shorter vessels that we all have deployed to discharge those vessels or those content uh, into the various depots. So it's, it's a massive uh, uh, achievement in terms of uh, efficiency and cost, uh, cost control of our operational expenses. For imports of bulk volumes, we have very few uh, terminals in this country through which you can import volumes of that size, vessels of that size. So it can handle, you know, the bulk volumes of imports. Uh, like I said, it also has a 300 million liter storage facility, which will become 1 billion, which will be back in the phase two, which will be divided in half. That phase two is to move from 300 million liters to 1 billion liters, which will make that storage facility the biggest in uh, phase 2 will also include a state-of-the-art liquefied petroleum gas facility which will also allow for both import and export of LPG. Multiplier effect is reflected in lower bulk and wholesale prices, resulting in lower costs for retail filling stations across the country. Here we have our gantry, also known as the truck loading rack, with the capacity to load up to 22 trucks simultaneously. Each bay has its own independent pump and meter. We have capacity for 16 PMS trucks and 6 AGO trucks. Our pump house also holds two pumps for backloading onto shuttle vessels from our tanks. As we operate round the clock, we can load out over 700 truckloads of product each day. In order
order to safeguard lives and property on our facility, we have installed four firefighting pumps, two diesel-powered and two electric-powered pumps. In addition, we have a water and foam fire system, including a three-tiered sprinkler system, which can contain and extinguish the worst fire outbreak, combined with a dedicated fire truck. Safety is always our top priority and we do not just talk the talk, we walk the walk by ensuring that we have sufficient firefighting equipment to manage a worst case scenario at all times. I'm happy to inform you that over the period of the execution of this project, we've not had one safety incident and that's because of how finicky, how meticulous we were at, uh, you know, with the planning and Safety was always number one in our priorities. We were monitoring progress. I personally, I went there even out to the sea to see what they had done a couple of times. In the final analysis, Pinnacle fuels Nigeria. Today, we are all witnesses of the epic commissioning as His Excellency commissions this facility, the centerpiece of a new system one that emphasizes efficiency, low cost, prevents supply disruptions. We are proud to have developed the first products terminal of its type, leading to a robust industry presence in Lekki Free Zone, with proximity to the Dangote refinery, for the benefit of all consumers and customers all across the length and breadth of Nigeria. The pipeline has bi-directional capability. We're able to import and we're also able to export. So we're hoping that once the refinery becomes operational, we're going to be a major complementary asset to the refinery. And we're also able to help with the evacuation of products from the refinery, either through the sea or through the road. It's, it's going to be like a hub for us, like when we say Rotterdam, Amsterdam, Antwerp, everybody's going there too. And most importantly, the location. And I will suggest to uh, Pinnacle and the board of Pinnacle, work closely with Dangote and Dangote Industries. Because the Dangote Refinery coming up in the same location will have a very good, good advantage if they work together. That's why in our unit there, we put people who are capable, who are able to manage the market, attract a small company for more potential. So when you have fuel scarcity, you can actually bring a mother vessel of load in one day, move it to the Nigerian market in one day. It's going to be a major, a major petroleum trading hub if it's well maintained. And we're here as regulators to ensure that they follow all the due process, meet all the requirements for them to succeed so that we can compete with other countries like uh, in Europe. Because Africa, I don't think we'll have a better Africa. So this is, a, this is a, a, a really future of uh, petroleum industry uh, survival, a major hub in Nigeria. If you are afraid to establish business in Nigeria, where else would you go? It is our country. No vision, no success. And on the nice try, nobody is speaking like this. I will to the people who will allow me to protect the business. All other business, those who are, those who are bringing the capital out to establish. And when you think of each of those opportunities, you then think about jobs that will be created, you think about additional investments that will be made. People can build storage facilities around there in the future zone as several companies are coming up to. You know, the opportunities are quite immense.
when you think about it. I'm happy that uh, today we, it has been such a project has been successfully delivered. And we're looking forward to uh, for the country and the whole as a whole to um, basically enjoy the fruits of, uh, of the success of the country. So the next time the next time you know you go to fill your car with petrol, you know, hopefully it will cost less and and uh, and uh, that experience will allow you to spend money on other things that you might want to purchase. NMBC is proud to be part of this uh, massive endeavor of Pinnacle Oil and Gas uh, limited to the foot of this massive infrastructure that has clearly is distribution of petroleum products across our country. We are also conscious of the very fact that some of the great loss that we have in Apapa area has been congested because of that particular sector. Currently, we know that this facility is the largest exit from the petroleum product distribution in the country. We believe that others will copy this endeavor and see how energy sufficiency and security in the shared to our country to bring back to the current sector participation in cooperation with the NMDC. And we congratulate you on the NMDC.